Hi, I'm James, a knee, foot and ankle specialist, and today I'm going to take the time to talk you through a common condition on the outside of the ankle called perineal tendonitis. All three run down the outside of your shin, then around the bone on the outside of your ankle, connecting into the fifth metatarsal, or with the peroneus longus, it runs underneath your foot and attaches into the first metatarsal, so just below your big toe joint. They play a key role while we walk in providing stability, so they co-contract with muscles on the opposite side to keep your ankle nice and stable as you move. They help to turn your foot outward, and they also assist with stability of the foot, so if you roll your ankle outwards, they contract, to try and keep your ankle nice and stable and reduce the stress placed on your lateral ligaments. One of the most common causes of perineal tendonitis is overuse. So typically we see that in runners where there's a sudden change in their activity levels, uh, whether that's a sudden increase in volume or a sudden increase in pace. Other causes can be things like running on a camber, so running on a slight tilt can place more stress on the perineal tendon. Running with a shoe that has a really thick midsole, we know that makes the shoe a little bit more unstable when compared to a minimalist shoe, and that can place extra stress on the perineal tendons to hold your ankle stable. Some of the common symptoms of perineal tendonitis are pain when walking on the outside of the ankle. That might improve after five to 10 minutes of walking, but it's typically worse afterwards. And normally we see a 24 hour response. This means that the following day after an increased step count, run or exercise in general, there may be stiffness and pain on the outer ankle in the morning. Sometimes there's tenderness to touch the outside of your ankle and it may coexist with a perineal subluxation. So that's a clicking or cracking of your ankle as you turn it outwards. This is a sign that the perineal tendon isn't staying within the groove that it normally sits as you move and it just flicks in and out as you contract the muscle. So in terms of diagnosis, normally a physician or a physical therapist should be able to diagnose it in clinic based on your symptoms and a physical assessment. It's rare that we'd refer you on for further imaging unless we were suspicious of a tear or a perineal subluxation. Other times that we may refer you for imaging is that it may coexist alongside other conditions such as a condition called sinus tarsi syndrome or there may be a significant ankle sprain and we're trying to assess the status of the ligaments alongside the perineal tendon. The prognosis is pretty good for this condition so normally it responds well to 6 to 12 weeks of progressive rehabilitation. We'd always recommend that this is under the guidance of a podiatrist or a physical therapist. In terms of treatment for perineal tendon, especially in the acute phase, we might look at taping. So that's taping the ankle into a slightly turned out position or everted position. This helps to shorten the tendon, offload it and reduce your pain. Alternatively, we might look at some form of insole or tilt on the heel. Again, the aim is to turn the heel slightly outwards to offload the tendon. We find that a low drop shoe or a more minimalist shoe, so that's a shoe that doesn't have a really thick mid stack that you might see in something like the Hocker uh, Bondi aid. This is helpful because a thicker shoe can make the sh foot more unstable as you walk or run. And finally, we know the most important thing and the thing that tendons respond to most often is perineal strengthening exercises. In the initial instance, that might begin with some simple band exercises where you're turning your foot outwards, some simple calf stretches to maintain a normal gait pattern. This typically progresses to more weight-bearing exercises, so that might look like some a form of heel raise, a heel raise with resistance from a band from different directions, some balance exercises, all focusing on stabilizing the ankle while rehabilitating the tendon. In some cases, we might look at treatments like shockwave therapy that helps to stimulate the tendon, promote the healing process and reduce pain. This is often used as an adjunct and while the evidence might not be there for the effectiveness of the treatment, we know that it typically doesn't have any side effects and that there is a small chance it can reduce the pain. So it's definitely not a first line of treatment, but something that we use as an adjunct. In most cases, this is enough to resolve symptoms. In the unfortunate view that it doesn't change, we might look at a gait analysis and this will give us a more in-depth view into where you're putting pressure through your feet as you walk and as you stand. As a result, we might be able to create some custom insoles that help to stabilize your ankle, offload the perineal tendons, or it might be just the case that we alter your gait slightly or give you some more appropriate advice on footwear. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more useful information on foot and ankle conditions.